Are you looking for an effortless way to add amazing scroll-based animations to your React projects? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a couple hooks from the Lottie React library that'll allow you to do just this, without stress, using Lottie animations. You're seeing some examples of Lottie animations on the screen right now. Lotties are these lightweight JSON files, and they're SVG-based, and so they scale really well without loss of quality. Now, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm Greg Fine, and here at the Code Creative, we look at all things related to the creative side of coding, including animation, web audio, CSS techniques, JavaScript, and much more. If that sounds intriguing, be sure to subscribe. And now let me give you an overview of what we're going to be covering in this video. We're going to start by setting up our React project and selecting our Lottie animations. And then I'm going to guide you step by step through the two hooks provided by Lottie React. And these allow us to do things like control our animations with the scroll bar, as well as with our cursor. And of course, these techniques will add that bit of extra magic to your websites and your apps. All right, so I've started out by scaffolding a new React project using Vite. And once I got that up and running, I came into my app.jsx file, and I cleared out everything between the React fragments. Now, once you've done that, you want to install this package called Lottie React. And that's going to give us access to two hooks, Use Lottie and Use Lottie Interactivity. Now, the next thing you're going to need is to actually get a Lottie animation. And you can search for these online. There's various free sites. And just to show you as an example, let's say that I wanted to get this dog here. And for this video, I'm just going to choose to download the basic Lottie JSON file at the top. Now, one thing you might want to do is if you click on this information icon, at the bottom of the page, you can see the total frames for this particular Lottie. And in this case, it's 25. So you can take note of that because we'll be referencing that value in our code. So hopefully now you've been able to download one or two Lottie JSON files. And so now you're going to need to put them somewhere inside of your project. So what you can do inside of the source directory, you can see inside of my assets folder, I've already gone ahead and created a folder called Lotties. And inside of the Lotties folder, I dragged a bunch of the JSON files that I downloaded. And as you can see, I downloaded a bunch of them just to have some options to work with. The other thing I went ahead and created was a components folder. And in here, you want to make a new file and you can call it lottie.jsx. So inside of this file, you can make a stateless functional component. So let's just return something temporary here to make sure that we're seeing it on the page. And we have to make sure to go back into app.jsx to actually import that and display it. And let's import it at the top. There we go. So hopefully you're still with me and you haven't jumped ship yet. It's always a pain in the butt setting up all this stuff at the start. But now we're ready to start working with our Lottie files and add some interactivity. So let's jump back into our Lottie.jsx component now, and we're going to actually start using those hooks. So let's start out by importing them at the top. So we're going to import use Lottie and use Lottie interactivity from Lottie React. So now we want to actually import the Lottie JSON file that we're going to use. And in my case, I've chosen this decorative confetti animation. And so now I've already jumped ahead and I pasted in the code that I want to walk you through. You can see we've got our confetti animation going sort of in a loop, but let's go ahead and check out how this is working. So I'm actually going to just stop it from playing for now and let's walk through it. Let's start by taking a look at line 13 here. We're using the use Lottie hook and we're passing in two things. We're passing in an options object and a style object as well. So here's the options object first, and we have a property called animation data. And this will point to the Lottie JSON file that we imported. And we don't want the animation to autoplay by itself because as we're going to see in a second, we're going to be controlling the animation with the scroll bar. And here's the style object, which is setting the height of the container for the Lottie animation. So here we're giving it a height of 800 pixels. And just to see it, let's put a border around it. And here you can see this is sort of the container of the Lottie itself. So if I do set autoplay back to true, you'll see the animation playing within this container. But let's go back to where we were. Let's get rid of that border. And next, we'll take a look at the Use Lottie Interactivity hook. And here's where the real fun begins. Inside of the Options object in Use Lottie Interactivity, the first thing that we're going to pass is the Lottie object. And remember, the Lottie object is what's returned from the Use Lottie hook. Right, so that's the object that actually has the path towards the Lottie animation, as well as its styles and any playback information, like this autoplay line. 
For this video, we're just focusing on controlling the animation with the scroll bar, and that's why we set the mode property to scroll. But if there's enough interest in this video, then I'll make a follow-up video in showing where the mode would be set to cursor, and then we can basically control the animation with the cursor position. And to do a little demonstration of how this animation is getting synced to the scroll bar, let's go back to the browser. So let's move the scroll bar down, and around here, you'll see the animation come in. And I can scrub it back and forth like a scrub playhead. So let's look at this actions array next and see how we can really take control of this animation. Let's start by taking a look at visibility first. Visibility basically controls the scroll zone. In other words, as we're scrolling down in the viewport, at what point does the animation start playing? So as we've set it now, you can think of these in terms of percentages. So the animation is going to start at about 40% of the way into the viewport, and it's going to end at about 90% of the way into the viewport. So to really see this, I think we should set the border back on the style object, and let's set it to solid. That way we can see the container around the Lottie animation. So as we scroll down, we can see that there's kind of an offset now before the animation actually starts playing, and that's because of the visibility settings we made. But what if we wanted that animation to start as soon as it entered the viewport? Well, let's set the first value to zero. And now as I start scrolling, we'll see that basically the animation has already started. Now for the type, we're giving it a value of seek, and that's what we need if we want to control the animation with the scroll bar. For frames, we're also using an array here, and what we're doing is we're defining which frame of the Lottie animation we want the animation to start on, and which frame we want it to end on. And if you remember, I told you to take note of the total frames when you first downloaded your Lottie JSON file. So I know this particular animation has 53 total frames, so here we're saying we want the animation to play from its start to its end. But what if we wanted it to start somewhere halfway through the animation? I don't know, about 25. And let's give it a little bit of offset before it starts playing, and let's check it out. So here we go. Right, we're basically starting from somewhere more in the middle of the animation rather than at the beginning. But wait, there's more! We can actually chain a bunch of these objects together. And let me show you why that's cool. So I'm going to start by taking the first object in the Actions Array, and I'm just going to copy and duplicate it. And now we can kind of chain things together. So let's say, for example, here we have our visibility set to start at 20%, but let's have it go to just 50%. And for the frames, let's say we're going to start in the first frame, but we're going to end on the 25th frame. Now here in the second object for visibility, we're going to pick up at 50%, and we'll leave the second value at 90%. But you see, at this point, we can do something different now. We don't have to keep seeking. We can do something like stop. We can just stop the animation, and we can stop it on a single frame. So let's stop it right there on that 25th frame, and let's check it out now. So we'll scroll down, and we'll see the animation start playing first, but then as it gets to about 50%, we see it just stops right there. Or another cool thing you can do is set the type to loop. So now once we get to this point, let's loop from, I don't know, let's say frame 25 to 35. And let's try that. So we scroll as we get to about 50%. It just kind of takes over and starts looping just those 10 frames from 25 to 35. Right, and you don't just have to have these two objects. I mean, we can have a third object and we can do something after the loop. So you can really customize this. If you're interested in learning how to bring your web pages to life with cool animations, GSAP, and scrolly telling techniques, check out my course, Scrolly Telling 101. Since I launched the course, the response has been amazing, with students commenting on the wealth of web dev tips and tricks included in the lessons. I'm going to leave a link down below for you, and you can start by checking out some of the free preview videos there. I think you're going to love it.